showing Julia. It's time I show my work. <clears throat> the mall is si silent except for Thelma, the macaw, who is practicing a new phrase. Uh-oh! Julia is finishing her homework. George is sweeping outside. Mac has gone home for the night. I grab knot tag and carefully pull out the folded paper. So many paintings. Page after page. Piece after piece of my giant puzzle. I pound on the glass and Julia glances over. Fingers trembling, I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green with a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another picture and then another and then another. Each one a tiny part of the whole. Julia looks confused, but... What is it? she asks. She shrugs. It doesn't matter. It's pretty, just as it is. Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think no. It does matter. More paintings. George calls to Julia. He's done for the night. Grab your backpack, he says. Hurry, it's late. I gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't, doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. Dig through the pile. They're here somewhere. I know they are. I find one, but... And then another, and then I try to hold all four of them against the glass. Bob, I say, help me, hurry. Bob grabs the painting with his teeth and drags them to me one by one. I shove the pictures through the window crack. They're crumpled up and they tear. There are too many pieces. My puzzle's too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth some millions someday. You never know. She arranges the paintings into a neat stack. I suppose Mac's going to want to sell them at the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove more out the hole. More and more and more of them, one after the other. So Ivan's been painting, has he, George says. And puts on his coat. A lot, says Julia with a laugh. A whole lot. You're not taking all those home with you, are you, George asks? I mean, no offense to Ivan, but they're just blobs. Julia thumbs through the towering stacks. They might not be blobs to Ivan. Let's leave those here by the office, George suggests. Mac will want to try to sell them. Although anyone who paid 40 bucks for a finger painting of a two-year-old can do, I don't know. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. She puts his feelings into them. He puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waved goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. I press my nose against the glass and watch her walk away. All my work, all my planning, wasted. I look at Ruby, sleeping soundly, and suddenly I know she'll never leave the Big Top Mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only. Chest beating. Often when visitors come to see me, they beat their chest against their puny little chest, pretending to be me. They pound away, soundless as wet wings of a new butterfly. The chest beating of a mad gorilla is not something you ever want to hear. Not even e wearing earplugs. Not even if you're three miles away wearing earplugs. A real chest beating sends the whole jungle running. And if the sky hasn't broken up, and as if men with guns are near. Angry. Thump. The sound of my second echoes through the mall. George and Julia spin around. Julia drops her backpack. George drops his keys. The pictures on the pot, they go flying. Thump, thump, thump. I bounce off the walls and screech and bellow and beat and beat and beat my chest. Bob hides under knot tag, his paws over his ears. I'm angry at last. I have someone to protect. After a long while, I grow quiet. I sit. It's hard work to be angry. Julia looks at me with wide, disbelieving eyes. I'm panting. I'm a little out of shape. What the heck was that, George man? Something's really wrong, Julia says. I've never seen Ivan act that way. He seems to be calming down, though, thank goodness, George says. Julia shakes her head. He's still upset, Dad. Look at his eyes. My pictures are scattered all over the floor like a huge autumn leaves. What a mess, George says, sighing. Wish I hadn't bothered sweeping tonight. Do you think Ivan's okay, Julia asks? Probably just a temper tantrum, George says. He reaches under a chair to retrieve a brown and red picture. Can't can't blame the guy stuck in there in that tiny cage all these years. Julia starts to answer, but then she freezes. She cocks her head, and she stares at her feet, where all my pictures are in disarray. Dad, 
She whispers, come see this. And I'm sure he's another Rembrandt, George says. Let's pick up these and let's get going, Julius. Jules, I'm exhausted. Dad, she says again, look, seriously, look at this. George follows her gaze. I see the blobs, many, many blobs with an occasional swirl. Please, can we go now? That's an H, Dad, Julia says. She kneels down, straightening the pictures. That's an H, and here she grabs one more picture. And that's an E, and that's, I think that's, that has to be an E. George rubs his eyes. I hold my breath. Julia is running now. She picks up the pieces and puts them down. It's a puzzle, Dad. This is something. It's a word. Maybe words. Pictures of something. A giant picture. Jules, George said, this is crazy. But he's looking at the floor, too, wondering what the pictures say. H, Julia says, E-O-H-O. Julia chews on her bottom lip. H-E-O. And looks out of one eye. H-E-O-I. George writes in the air in his fingers. I-E-O-H. Huh. Not the letter, an actual I. And that's a foot or maybe a tree in a trunk. Dad, I think that's a trunk. Julia runs to my window. Ivan, she whispers, what did you make? I stare back and cross my arms. This is making taking much longer than I thought. Humans. Sometimes they make chimps look smart. <laughs> Finally, Julia and George take the pictures to the ring where there's room to see them all. An hour passes by, and they try to assemble the puzzle. Ruby's awake, and she and Bob and I watch. Ivan, Ruby says, what's the picture? Is that a picture of me? Yes, I say proudly. Where am I supposed to be? That's a zoo, Ruby. See the walls and the grass and the people looking at you? Ruby squints. Who are all the other elephants? You haven't met them yet, I say. It's a very nice zoo, Ruby says with approving nod. Bob nudges me with his cold nose. It is indeed. The ring, Julia pumps her fist into the air. Yes! She cries. I told you, Dad. There it is. Home. H-O-M-E. George gazes down at the letters. He spins and looks at me. Maybe it's just a coincidence, Jules. No, you know, once in a trillion kind of thing. Like the old saying, the chimp and the typewriter. You give him long enough, he'll write a novel. I'm making grumbling noises as if a chimp would write a letter, let alone a book. Then, how do you explain the rest of it, Julia demands. It's a picture of Ruby in a zoo. How do you know it's a zoo, George asks. See the circles, see the gates, see the red giraffe in it? George squints and tilts his head. Are you sure that's a giraffe? I was thinking that was more like the lines of a deformed cat. It's the logo for the zoo, Dad. It's on all their signs. Explain that. George gives her a helpless smile. I can't. I can't even begin to. I'm just over here saying, trying to be logical and find an explanation. Look how big this is. Julia puts the last piece of the ruby's right ear into place. It's huge. It's definitely large, George agrees. Julia watches me. She chews her thumbnail. I see the question in her eyes. She turns back to the painting and stares and then, truly looking, a slow smile dawns on Julia's face. Dad, she says, I have an idea, a big idea. Julia races around the edge of the painting in her arms with a wide, spread wide. A billboard, a big billboard. I'm not following you. I think this is meant to be on the billboard. That's what Ivan wants. George crosses his arm over his chest. What Ivan wants, he repeats slowly, and you know this because you two have been chatting? Because I'm an artist, and he's an artist. Uh-huh, says George. Julia clasps her hands together. Come on, Dad! I'm begging you! George shakes his head. No, I'm not doing that. No, no, Billboard. No way! I'll get the ladder, Julia says. You get the glue. I know it's dark, but the Billboard is lit. Mac will fire me, Jules, Julia considers. But think of the publicity, Dad. Everyone would know about Ruby. You want me to put that sign up that shows Ruby in a zoo with the word home in giant letters? George gestures to the picture. A sign, incidentally, that just happens to be made by a gorilla? Exactly! 
And do you want me to do this without Max's permission, George says? Exactly. No. George says, no way. Julia goes to the edge of the ring, carefully not to step on any of my paintings. She picks up Max's claw stick, and she walks back and hands it to her father. George runs his finger along the blade. She's just a baby, Dad. Don't you want to help her? But how would it help her, Jules? Even if lots of people come see Ivan's sign, it doesn't mean anything's going to change. I'm not exactly sure yet, Julia shakes her head. Maybe people will see the sign and they'll know this isn't where Ruby belongs. Maybe they'll want to help her too. George sighs. He looks at Ruby. He, she waves her trunk. It's a matter of principle, Dad, not... Dad, P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. L-E, George corrects. Dad, Julie says softly, what if Ruby ends up like Stella? George looks at me, and at Ruby, and then at Julia. He drops a claw stick. <sighs> the latter, he says quietly. It's in the storage locker. The next morning, I watch Max's car slam to a halt in the parking lot. He leaps out. He stares at the billboard. His jaw is just open. He doesn't move for a long time.